This video will teach you how to identify a good niche, right? I did this video here, which is the top 10 niches to consider, but there's hundreds, thousands of things, millions of things to talk about online that can make money. So if that's the case, how can you have an original thought, right? Oh, I want to do this thing, but then you need to compare it with data driven decisions. And how do you do that? You have to use tools. Some are free, some are paid. I'm going to show you exactly what I do when I consider a niche to jump into and you can replicate it to see, oh, I'm just going to spin my wheels for the next six months if I do this niche. But this one, oh, there's a lot of opportunity and not a lot of people have thought about it. And yes, people on Google are searching for it because if people are searching for it, a lot of people, enough people, then you can make money. So let's go over the tools we're going to use. So of course, Google, we're going to use, we're going to use Uber Suggest, which is a great free tool. We are going to use the website authority checker on Ahrefs yet again, a free tool. I am going to use the paid version of Ahrefs as well. And we're going to use answer the public. I think it's a free tool. You can use it once or twice a day. Answer Socrates. You might've seen this on one of the previous videos, Google trends, another free tool, Google keyword planner, another free tool. And all this is going to base, be based upon Bonsai Mary, right? Bonsai Mary is a website that I purchased. It's an aged domain. And um, I'm trying to pivot it to one particular subject, which is philodendrons, this plant right here, beautiful plant. So to begin, I had an idea. I want to talk about indoor house plants that I have this plant at home. Okay, great. But is it even worth going after? And I can show you you know, after doing research, I have posted on the website 33 different or 32 different topics here, as well as I think about 200 different species care guides of specific philodendrons. So long and short of it is, yes, I think it's worth going into this niche, but why? And I'm going to show you in this video why I think it's worth it. And you can replicate this for any niche. So first steps first, let's go to Google Trends. We're going to do philodendron and let's see what pops up. So immediately off the bat, you can see United States search, right? We can go anywhere in the world here, but I want to do United States because that's my audience. That's where we're going to make the most money. Past day, let's do past five years. And then all categories, we can just leave as is. And this is going to give us an idea about a specific niche, right? What does this niche look like? Down here at the bottom is 2018 all the way to now. It has risen interest over time. That's great. I want to be behind some sort of surge of interest. If you are, it makes your life easier. Is this thing trending? Yes, it is. Furthermore, all right, look here. You see this line, 100? That's like top interest level, like super volume, people interested, people are searching this. Philodendron's there. Furthermore, it has interest in the summer months and then it falls off in the winter months interest in the summer falls off again. So this is a seasonal niche, despite being an indoor plant, philodendron, you know, an indoor plant, we can't grow this in Maryland in the winter, it will die, right? Despite that, it still loses interest in the winter. So you have to understand that. So ask yourself, is your niche actually trending upwards? Like, is there raised interest right now? Is it seasonal? Is it enough volume based upon Google Trends to even care about? So once you've done that analysis, scroll down here, and this is interesting, interest in region. You can go by city, sub-region, which would be a state. You can go by metro. You can see where people are interested in this. And, you know, this looks like the West Coast for the most part. Then scroll down a bit more. This is very, very powerful related topics. You can do rising or you can do top, right? Swiss cheese plant, right, is a type of monstera. It's a philodendron. Uh, you can do Ryzen, which means they're trending upwards. Pothos, it's a different type. And then over here, related queries, Ryzen, you could do top yet again. You can see the top searches right here for free, right? Right in front of us, Cream Splash Philodendron. I think I missed this one, actually. Let's click on it. You can click on a term, and you can see about this one. So let's see, interest over time, the last five years. Well, you know, it's kind of Ryzen. Maybe we could do past four hours or past 30 days. Let's see if it is, you know, a little bit of volume, but we can dive in further. So how do we dive in further? So this is, I call it my Bonsai Mary topical cluster format. And if you've heard about content hubs, content clusters, well, this is the behind the scenes look of what I have going on, right? So this here, this whole column are the names of articles that I've already determined 
that were okay a go low competition 33 of them and then i did a blanket technique which i talk about in the master class on the different care guides for like philodendron deja vu but the point is let's just look here this one why is my philodendron turning yellow how did i find this term and how can we verify that this thing is even ranking to begin with but let's first jump to the the url like this is what the article looks like and this is made um, with the the word galaxy suite which you've probably seen but nonetheless check it out what we can do we can use a tool like answer the public or answer socrates and we get questions this is the free method right i'm sure the turning yellow one is in here right why philodendron leaves turn yellow what we can do we can merely take that query and then push it all right we'll push it to google and we'll say just tell us what the volume is is the competition high is it low and look competition low 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 and look three months change some of these are trending upwards and there's some serious volume behind it 100 to a thousand average monthly searches on why is my philodendron turning yellow so quickly with free tools right we used answer socrates and we use google uh, keyword planner yes this is a go but that's only one of them so what would you do i would come in here and i'll go through a different one let's go why is a good one so why's are good um why is philodendron expensive why philodendron is expensive kind of a backwards way to say it, but people type in the serps a little different than how we speak right and that's okay and yet again a really good one why philodendron is so expensive low 100 to uh, 10 to 100 average monthly searches uh, why in particular um, is the pink princess philodendron so expensive is a high one because people probably are very interested in this uh, pink princess pink princess philodendron let's go here i just want to see the pink princess philodendron let's just look at it it's pretty right so people are interested in it i get that so let's keep going with it um why strawberry shake is so expensive so look there's all these nooks and crannies in your keyword right the, the pink princess was very high competition but we look here the strawberry shake philodendron has good volume and it's low competition what you need to do is you need to get into the weeds and you just start mixing up the dirt that you're trying to see what is good dirt what is bad dirt where's the rocks throw the rocks out and keep your nice you know fluffy dirt that's what we're trying that's sorting out keyword that's how i think about it at least we're on a plant niche might as well keep it in that let's keep going why is the pink princess philodendron so expensive yet again hi uh, philodendron why so expensive low so there's opportunity here i would go through each and every one of these if i didn't have paid tools right and i would see is it a good thing but furthermore here's something else we can do let's do this i'm going to take this and i'll show you what's next so when you're starting a website right and you're thinking about a niche to work on you're about to invest at minimum a lot of time and quite possibly a lot of money too so to double verify what i do is i type in the query why philodendron leaves turn yellow and look here this gives us auto suggest right in other videos i show you how to go about this and what you need to consider there but here's the point i want to see who our competition is right so right here we have mansfield news journal i'm going to control click on them we have bloomscape and we have plantly io all right this is what i care about i want to take this one right here I'm going to push it to uber suggest so i took the url of the top one and we're going to push it to uber suggest a free tool i want to see their domain rated i want to see how powerful mansfieldnewsjournal.com is in relation to my website's domain rating which is around 30. Now if you look here okay they have a domain authority of 64. all right much higher double ours now we're going to rinse and repeat so bloomscape which is the second serve has a page authority of 40. furthermore let's get the last one here which is plantly.io and we're going to push it here so let's do search and let's see what these guys come out page authority 30 which is about my website now keep in mind this is just one parameter to consider it's not the end all just because they have a higher domain rating than you doesn't mean you can't compete it really doesn't but i want to get a feel for it so what's next so next is actually looking at what they have going on on the website a stroll through the garden well, keep in mind this is the number one search result what is this article all about and this is a you know a, a newspaper a news journal i want to look at their headers let's click the uh, seo meta in one click it loads headers and the headers kind of stink so i'm thinking to myself i can compete with this this was published 
it keeps on knocking me to a different page, which is bad in itself. But this was published in June 2022. Okay, great. Scroll down. How big is this article? It's very thin. Okay, great. Let's look at competitor, competitor number two. Very thin article. I can look at the H2s, H3s yet again. It's a mess. And then Plantly, which is usually a pretty good website. Not interested. Let's look here. Uh, let's look at the header structures quickly. If it can load SEO meta in one click, much better, much better. It looks nice. So let's scroll down here. Okay. So we know that we have competition in the way of this newspaper, this one, and this one. This is here probably just because, you know, it has a high domain rating and maybe uh, just today when I type it in, they're testing them out. I imagine this is our real competitor here, Plantly. So then we have to go a step further. So this is what we're going to do next. Google, we're gonna do siteplantly.io. So put your competitor, who you suspect to be a real competitor, and type in the keyword you're going after. And look, they have about 11,000 results. So in other words, plantly.io is a real expert in this field. That means we need to go further with competitor research, right? But let's see what they have going on, how to care for philodendron plants. All right, so that's like a tier one article for sure. Most beautiful varieties, best vining varieties. Uh, let's see if they have any long tail keywords. Is philodendron toxic to cat cats? Uh, symptoms and treatments. So a long tail keyword is one that has, you know, lower search volume, right? Because it's more specified, it's specific, and, and doesn't have to do with how many words it is, uh, but that's usually a natural consequence of a long tail keyword because it is more specific. So let's do something. Let's push, is philodendron toxic to cats, symptoms and treatment into Google Keyword Planner? I just wanna see about it. And you'll see, ooh, average monthly searches is only zero to 10. Ah, hmm, not much here. So why would they write about it? So this is where you need to be careful because if we were to come here and take off this suffix and just go with the root idea and hit this, all of a sudden you're gonna see exactly why they're going after this. The average monthly searches, 1,000 to 10,000, three months change, 900%, and the competition is low. Is philodendron safe for cats? Same thing. This is a huge opportunity. So what we've done here, I mean, there's always going to be competition in your space, but what we've done here is found a competitor we can look at and, and kind of trail them, do parasitic SEO and say, ooh, I see you, I see what you're doing, and I'm going to emulate what you're doing as well. Now, because we're on the trail of Plantly.io, I wanted to push this to Ahrefs free tool. So the domain rating according to them is 36. This is a bit lower than uh, Uber suggests was saying, right? And I usually use hrefs because uh, I have the free tool, right? I can come over here and I could say, okay, we typed in the URL here, plantly.io and all the stuff. They approximately have 400 traffic and we could say based upon what keywords are they getting this traffic for that particular article. So remember that is why uh, your leaves are turning yellow and look, it shows you exactly every single keyword but we're gonna take it a step further. Now we're in Ahrefs, and this is kind of where I play often. It is a paid tool, right? But if you're serious about SEO and you can afford it, I think it's a great tool, but what are we gonna do next? So we have two options right here, quickly with plantly.io, and I'm gonna jump off of this competitor research in a second and pull back out to philodendron, but I wanna show you this, right? Plantly.io up here, type in their website. This is the organic keywords, and we sorted by philodendron over here. Anything here has philodendron. The green you see in the middle here is keyword difficulty. Green means easy. And so many things here are easy. So my brain is going immediately, okay, there is opportunity here. And this is showing you exactly which ones they're ranking for. And you can click here and get an idea of what their articles look like. That's great. But with Ahrefs, we can be even better. We can go even more powerful. So philodendron is our keyword yet again. The lowest domain rating in the top five SERPs is up to 15. That means, you know, rank number one, two, three, four, five, somewhere in there. The websites that show up when you type in a keyword are one of them is at least kind of a weak website is basically what I'm saying. Show me what comes up. And the total volume for that is 111,000 uh, per month. People clicking on these potentials. Humongous opportunity. Now, we could go through here. That's exactly what I did and figure out which ones are good for us. But you can just get a feel for a niche. Is there zeros across the board? Is there high volume like there is for philodendron? And keep in mind, I, I go over this in this video right here to create an expandable niche. Like you have to go after a niche that you can expand upon. This website here, Bonsai Mary, is an indoor houseplant niche. Philodendron's one, right? 
fill an entrance, one, and we're showing all this opportunity here. The point is, if you're coming up with a niche, don't put yourself in a corner and just talk about philodendron, right? We know there's opportunity here, but have it expandable. Now, before we jump off of Ahrefs, I want to show you one more thing. See here, all terms, you can click all terms. This is where we were previously, but you can click questions as well. And questions are going to give us these low, 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 low competition. There's only 820 per month, but look how to propagate a tree philodendron. Super low competition, super low volume, because when you start a website and you're starting a niche, you need to find low keyword difficulty with low volume that can rank for it, because it's like a flywheel. Once you get a little traction, Google shows you, yes, you get a little traction, then you can build up the articles, right? You need those low difficulty, low search volumes to begin with. So what it comes down to truly is keyword research, competitor research. It's the same research you're going to do when you find your niche. It's the same research you're going to do when you make your second hub, your third hub, your fourth hub. These are all things I discuss in the masterclass. There's nothing new here. Like that's the secret, right? You want to figure out how to do a, a good niche. You need to figure out how to do proper keyword research. So if you like this video, um, trying to hit 20,000, 30, 40, 50,000 subs on this channel, uh, having fun with it, I thank you. Please sub, please like, share with a friend, check out the masterclass, check out the word galaxy suite. We have a lot of things going on here, a lot of good things. Check out the community tab. Um, I have a good video posted here that's a good one to watch. After you've watched this one, you can kind of continue the knowledge flow, right? But anyways, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.